So modern day technology is advancing at an unprecedented rate. This makes it very hard for us to keep up with it and come up with proper regulations in order to help prevent it being used in the wrong way. And what technology do you think needs to be outright stopped? I'm your host James and these are the top 10 forbidden technologies scientists have warned us not to use. And we're starting off this list with lethal autonomous weapons or laws. These are weapons that are programmed by human beings but don't require a human being in order to operate. They track and engage with the enemy independently using AI. Of course they come in the form of drones, robots and some of them could be incredibly small. AI researchers from all over the world right now are strongly advocating for banning the use of this technology. The amount of suffering this type of warfare uh, could cause is unimaginable. Not only could these things be programmed to take out important political leaders, but they could be programmed to target specific groups of people too. Innocent civilians. Imagine a swarm of tiny drones sent out to eliminate masses of people from a specific group or race in one swift attack with no known source. There's just, just nothing good that comes uh, from this, or at least very little. One of the major problems here is not only that AI operated machines don't have the ability to properly discern what constitutes a proper target because they're machines, they have no attachment to human life, but it's also just too easy. Not for the victims of course, but for the people sitting back and letting a machine do all the dirty work. Part of what deters people from violence is the up close personal aspect of it. There's a, there's a Star Trek episode called The Taste of Armageddon that is eerily similar to this and I think Kirk sums it up best. Death, destruction, disease, horror. That's what war is all about. That's what makes it a thing to be avoided. You've made it neat and painless. So neat and painless, you've had no reason to stop it. It's pretty scary stuff. Number nine, human augmentation. Ever seen or read a cyberpunk story? If so, then you're probably very familiar with human augmentation. Cybernetic body replacements, giving people enhanced abilities like mechanical eyes that can see better, limbs that are stronger than your average human. Now, some human augmentation is great. People who are born without essential body parts or people have suffered terrible accidents. Technology like this is fantastic, but just like with anything, it has the potential to get completely out of hand. First of all, this could make the gap between the rich and the poor even wider than it already is. Let's just say technology like this started seeping its way into everyday life. Maybe people would start being hired for jobs based on the effectiveness of the technology built into their bodies. And if this technology turns out to be expensive, which I gotta imagine it, it would be, or at least very well could be, people would be on a far more uneven playing field than they are now. And number eight, we have genetic editing. So this is basically human augmentation before a person is, is even born. Not with mechanical implants, but editing the genes so that the baby will be born the exact way the parents want. No illnesses or disabilities, they'll be tall, strong, physically elite. This sounds nice, but once again, we could have the same problem as with cybernetic implants. Who's gonna be able to afford to do this? Again, that disparity between the classes could just continue to expand. Now it's not like the rich don't already have an advantage. That has and always will be the case, but on a physical level and such a definitive final way like this, it just sounds really frightening. On the other hand, if we uh, all had access to this type of technology and call me a dork for saying this if you want, but I think differences are important. People are different, you know, people of different heights and shapes with varied sets of strengths and weaknesses. It gives people character, it gives us challenges to push through and we gain unique perspectives because of it. Without all that, we'd have a pretty boring world because at the end of the day, what's so inspiring about being perfect? So yeah, on one hand I'm saying it would be bad if only one group of people had access to it, while at the same time saying it would be bad if we all had it. I don't know, it just sounds bad to me. Want a society where the rich not only have power, but are now superior in every single way? Or do you want a boring world where everyone is basically Barbie and Ken dolls? Take your pick. Next on the list we have neurotechnology. Neurotechnology involves using technology to interact with or manipulate the brains 
functions, stuff like brain computer interfaces, deep brain stimulation. Now there's a lot of good that can come from this technology, primarily in the medical field, but there are ethical concerns. Of course, having a form of technology readily available that directly accesses the brain raises the risks of hacking or unauthorized access to personal thoughts and information. Something like this could easily be misused and exploited, leading to a loss of privacy and control over one's mind. Neurotechnology also raises questions about consent, especially in cases where it's used to modify behavior or enhance cognitive abilities. And again, there's the potential for unequal access to technology like this, and we all know what kind of effect that would have on society. And at number six, we have advanced ransomware. Ransomware is malicious software that infects a computer or network, encrypts important files, and then demands you pay in exchange for the decryption key. As much of a problem as this type of stuff already is, it's on the rise and could become a much more significant threat, especially if imbued with something like AI. The use of AI could amplify the danger of ransomware attacks. It can enable attackers to personalize and automate their attacks, making them more sophisticated and harder to detect. And with AI, an attacker could set traps on just a larger scale too, right? Like all they gotta do is just sit back and let it do its thing. This technology might also adapt and evolve in real time, making defenses like firewalls almost useless. And AI generated content could also deceive users into downloading malicious files. Let's say, let's say it could flawlessly replicate an email that you think is coming from a friend or family member, for example, or some other reputable source, right? Quantum computing. Quantum computing is a new approach to computing that uses quantum bits or qubits to process information. So unlike traditional computers, like on your laptop or your smartphone, which use bits that are either zero or one, qubits can represent any combination of both zero and one simultaneously, allowing them to perform very complex calculations a lot faster than your average computer. This could be great for solving complex problems, of course, but again, there are some dangers here. One concern is its ability to break encryption methods that not only you and I use day to day, but on a larger scale too, sensitive data could be leaked with far more ease than any hacker would be able to accomplish. Authentication systems that we have in place now could also become obsolete, leading to potential breaches and cyber attacks. At number four, we have hacked vehicles, self-driving cars, are a thing now, which is kinda cool, but uh, because of the technology that's used to make this happen, the internet, there are concerns about self-driving cars being vulnerable to hacking. As autonomous vehicles rely heavily on complex software systems, any vulnerabilities or bugs could be exploited and hackers could potentially gain control of the car and do God knows what. They could use the vehicle to attack pedestrians or intentionally harm the passengers. Manufacturers are definitely working to implement advanced security to help prevent threats like this, but nothing is foolproof. It's stuff that stay ahead of ever evolving hacking techniques. Number three, nanotechnology. Nanotechnology involves the manipulation of matter at an atomic molecular and supramolecular scale. It could be potentially used in medicine, electronics, and food technology. And just like with any form of technology though, it could be used for good, but it does raise safety concerns. The small size of nanoparticles could enable them to penetrate cells and tissues, potentially leading to unintended health effects. There's also a potential toxicity of nanoparticles and we're still not sure of the long-term impact they could have on human health and the environment. Nanoparticles might also interact unpredictably with biological systems, causing unintended harm there, and manufacturing and disposing of nanoparticles and of nanomaterials could have an environmental risk. And of course, the potential to create powerful nanoscale weapons or surveillance devices could obviously be a problem too. At number two, we have facial recognition. It doesn't get much more science fiction-y than facial recognition. Having a computer scan your face to unlock your phone or gain access to a place instead of using a boring old key. But this technology is also being implemented in security cameras now. Uh, while this can be useful in identifying criminals there's a major invasion of privacy with this. Facial recognition is deployed without consent, leading to mass surveillance where people are constantly tracked and monitored in public spaces. There's also a risk of misidentification too. Like this technology is not 100% flawless, 
It may generate false positives or negatives leading to innocent individuals being falsely accused or targeted. And technology like this as well as pretty much everything else on this list is advancing faster once again than we have time to comprehend. We just don't have proper guidelines in place right now and companies and governments might and in some places currently are exploiting the technology for their benefit and just throwing ethics out the window. Finally, we have AI itself. This one is pretty obvious. Scientists from around the world are warning of how out of hand this technology can get. Arguably it already has. What nobody is able to agree on though is a solid solution and plan of how to go about regulating it. It's mostly jobs that are on the forefront of everyone's list of concerns right now, me being one of them. Jobs in the entertainment industry are obviously under huge threat. At the end of the day, most companies, I mean they're going to go with cost cutting measures, right? So why hire actors or writers when you can have a computer do it? Totally sucks artistically. Most people would probably agree that's not what they want to see, but given some time, it could easily become the norm. Even if art ain't a big concern for you, AI could take over countless other jobs too. Imagine your kids going to school and being taught by an AI generated teacher. I mean, they, they've got all the knowledge in the world, right? Actually, you know what? That's kind of far fetched. They wouldn't go into school, they could just throw on a VR helmet and go to virtual classes. Yeah, it's a bit of a concern. But at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to let this technology beat us. I think we as humans are too persistent and get bored far too easily to allow ourselves to be replaced by robots while we sit around and eat fried chicken while watching AI generated episodes of Seinfeld. I think we all want more out of life than that, right? With all that said, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.